Circuit Pythonistas. Welcome back to Circuit Python School, and in this lesson, we're going to connect, then program an external NeoPixel light strip. Let's code! Now, if you don't have a NeoPixel strip, feel free to skip ahead to a later video, but if you do have a strip, here's how to attach it to your CPB. So you've got three wires at the end of the strip. If you have a strip like mine, power is red, signal is white, and ground is black. And for light strips, clip the power to the V out pad. For signal, where we clip it is linked to the code that we're going to write, and we're going to write code assuming that the signal is attached to the A1 pad, so let's clip it there, and the ground can be clipped to any of the GND pads. Now after you're all clipped up, you can plug your CPB in again, and we don't see any activity on the LED lights, because we haven't written any code to light those up. So let's put in some configuration code so that our CircuitPython program knows the LED lights exist. Now when we write code to recognize NeoPixel lights, we need to know what pin or pad they're attached to and how many lights we have. So if I count up the lights on my strip, I know that I've got 30. I'll add a comment at the start of this program since I'm about to modify it. And then let's scroll down to the line where we created our pixels variable. That one here that's pixels equal. Now just above this line where I create pixels, I'm going to make a small change to my code. Instead of referencing board.neopixels inside of this line and the number 10, I'm going to create two separate variables and then pass these values in. So just above pixels, I'm going to create a value pixels underscore pin and set that equal to board.neopixel. And I'm also going to create a value named pixels underscore num underscore of underscore lights and set that equal to 10. Then in this pixel statement down here, I'm going to change board.neopixels and swap in pixels underscore pin. And I'm going to swap out the number 10 with pixels num of lights. Now, so far, I haven't made any changes that impact the new light strip. Nothing's happened to that strip. I'm just working with the 10 LED lights that are built into the CPB. But here's a reminder what this pixel code does. This sets up a value held in the variable that we're calling pixel, so we gave it that name, setting pixels equal to an object created by the NeoPixels, capital N, capital P, blueprint, or more accurately, the class named capital N, capital P, NeoPixels, that's in the library, lowercase NeoPixels. And we set this up by passing in a bunch of attributes. And these include pixels underscore pin, which is board.neopixel, which means that we're accessing the NeoPixels that are attached to the board. And by setting the next argument to pixels num of lights, we're saying, hey, there are 10 LED lights on the board. Now we're going to use the same class NeoPixel dot capital N capital P NeoPixel to set up our light strip. We're just going to use a different location for the light strip and a different value for the number of lights on the strip. And so I'm going to highlight and copy these three lines that set up the 10 LED lights that are attached to the board, and I'm going to paste them below, and I'm going to modify these lines so that they set up the NeoPixel light strip of 30 lights that I've clipped to pad A1 on our board. So I'm going to change the name Pixels, which created the Pixels object, and I'm going to create a light strip object named Strip. And I'm going to change the name pixels underscore pin and change that to strip underscore pin. And the strip is attached to the board's A1 pad. So I'll replace board.neopixel with board.a1. Remember, these pads are often referred to as pins on traditional boards. So in code, you usually see the pads referred to as pins. And I'll change pixels num of lights to strip underscore num underscore of underscore lights. And I'll make sure I change the 10 to 30 since there are 30 lights on my NeoPixel strip. And I'll highlight strip underscore pin, copy it, and I'll paste that over pixels pin in this line where I create my strip object and I'll copy strip num of lights and I'll use that to replace pixels num of lights. Now down here in our while true loop, right underneath where we refer to pixels at a particular index to turn on that light, I'm going to refer to strip at index i and I'll also set that equal to colors at index i. Then when we turn off all the pixels, we also need to turn off all the lights in the strip. So I'm going to highlight and copy pixels fill black, paste it below and change it to strip dot fill passing in black. Now we can open the serial monitor and click save and LabCat Admiral Grace is helping us today. She's pointing out that only 10 lights on the LED strip lit up, but that's exactly what our code said to do. In our for loop up here, we go through a range that's the length of pixels, which is 10 because there are 10 lights in the pixels object. So now let's try a challenge. Let's see if we can light up the entire light strip with the same colors we're using to light up our board. Now this video shows how things should execute when you're done with this challenge. You want to modify the code that we've written so that you light up the entire NeoPixel light strip. So if you've got 30 lights like I have on my strip, then for every single light on the CPB that you light up, you should light up the next three lights on your NeoPixel strip in the same color. So that when you're done, all the lights on the CPB should be lit in colors in the color list, and the light strip should also be filled in with those same colors. So why don't you give it a try, pause, and then resume, and let's compare answers.
Well, let's first calculate the number of lights on the strip that we need to light up for each light that lights up on our CPB. And I'll create a variable called strip underscore lights underscore per underscore NeoPixel. And I'll set this equal to a calculation that's the number of lights on the strip, which is this value here, strip num of lights, divided by, so that's a slash, the number of lights on the board, which is pixel num of lights. Now I'll show you another important piece of information. In my case, we're dividing these two whole numbers, 30 by 10, and that gives us a three, which is a whole number as well. It's a number with no decimal places. But if the numbers didn't divide evenly, then we would have a decimal place. And we can't use a decimal value in Python when Python is expecting a whole number. If we do, we'll get an error and our code will stop running. Now we're going to use the result of this calculation in a for loop down below, and we can't pass a decimal value into a range. So in order to get rid of any decimal values that we might have from this calculation, I'm going to preface this calculation with int, int, all lowercase. And then I'm going to wrap the calculation in parentheses. What that does is it takes the value of this calculation and it converts it to an integer, which means it'll drop any decimal values in the result and just return the whole number. Now, frankly, this is not going to impact most of the people working through this video because NeoPixel strips are usually sold in numbers that easily divide by 10. But if this did apply to you, you might not be getting the exact value that you want from this calculation. And when you run the code we're about to write, it might leave some lights at the end of your strip that aren't yet lit up. Now, you can try to modify your calculation, but in a future lesson, we're going to talk about conditionals, which will make it easier to check to see if you've got a fraction and then put a better calculation in here. Right now, this should work for most folks, but if you're that rare person that's working with an LED strip that doesn't have a number of lights evenly divisible by 10, feel free to come back here after you learn about conditionals and modify your solution. Then in the for loop, underneath where I set pixels at index i to colors at index i, I'll put in a comment that says, light up a group of strip lights per NeoPixel for each pixel light i. Then I'll write a for loop that's going to light up strip lights per NeoPixel lights for every individual pixel i that I light up. So I'm going to say for, and I'll call this lights in group, in range, and in that range it's going to be strip lights per NeoPixel. So for me, since my strip lights per NeoPixel is 3, this loop is going to go through three times with values 0, 1, and 2. And what I'm going to set up in the next line is which light in my strip I want to light up. So I'll call that strip underscore light, and I'll set that equal to i, which is the index number of the light in the group of 10 lights on the board that I just lit up, multiplied by strip lights per NeoPixel, which is 3, and then I'll just add this light in group, which is going to be that value 0, 1, or 2 that's generated in this loop. So for every light inside of pixels that I light up, I'm going to light up the light on my NeoPixel strip that's at i multiplied by strip lights per pixel, which is 3, and I'll just add the value in this loop 0, 1, 2, so I light up all three of those lights. Then I'll modify the line below and bring it into the loop, so it says strip in bracket strip underscore light, and that equals colors at index i. And you know what else I'll do? For those of you that might have struggled with this problem, I'm going to put in some print statements so that you can see what's being calculated each step along the way. So just before the while true loop, I'm going to say print, and then in between double quotes, pixels num of lights equals, and then I'll close the quotes comma, then I'll paste in pixels num of lights to print out that value. Then I'll say comma, and I'll also print out strip lights per neopixel equal, and then at the end I'll put in strip lights per neopixel. Then, so that we can check to see what the value of i is after we've lit up pixels at index i, let's type print paren double quotes current light, which equals i, which equals, and then after the quotes, comma, i. And then within this inner for loop, just before we light up the strip light at the index strip underscore light, oh wait, I notice on the line above, my parentheses are just around strip lights per neopixel. I actually don't need any parentheses in here because of operator precedence. Multiplication always happens before addition, but just to make it super clear, I'll put parentheses around what's being multiplied. Then on the line below, we'll say print parens quotes, light in group equals, and then close quotes, comma, light in group. And we'll also add comma double quotes, strip light equals close dub quotes, comma strip light. And now this wasn't part of the challenge problem, but I'm going to put an additional time sleep with five seconds in here. That'll give you enough time, hopefully, to be able to read through each of these print statements and really understand what the different values are as our code is executing at each of these different print statements. So again, if you've got this, no problem. You don't need the print statements, but if you struggled, hopefully the print statements will help you understand, hey, this is what's going on inside the code as it executes. So now I'll open the serial monitor. I'll click on save. Our code executes. And remember, it's going to stop for five seconds when it hits that time sleep five, but we can see what's happening at each step along the way. Board light current pixel light zero lights up in red, so we light up the strip light zero, one, and two in red as well. 
Ward light one lights up in pink, so we light up three, four, and five in pink. Ward light two lights up in orange, so we light up six, seven, eight in orange. Ward light three is in yellow, so we light up strip nine, ten, and eleven in yellow. And so hopefully you've got this. Remember, you can control C at any time if you want to stop the executing code and get a better look at what's printing out in your serial console. If you struggled, I hope adding these print statements helped out. And remember, you can sprinkle print statements inside of any executing code in order to be able to understand what's happening at different points of execution. This can also be a really useful tool if you grab somebody else's project off the web and you're not quite sure what's happening. You can always insert print statements that will update you on the status of different values as the code executes. So if you got the challenge, congratulations. If you struggled, hang in there. In the next video, we'll use the Adafruit LED animations library to include some super cool LED animations with just a few lines of code. Keep at it, coder.